NC State and Wake Forest getting ready to kick off. Starting lineup remains the same for Tim Santoro and NC State. Fernanda Sota, second straight game up in the midfield, Patty, but Jamis Joseph always the most dangerous attacking player. Well, no doubt, Jamis Joseph is what makes this offensive unit tick for the Wolfpack. So quick, technical, loves to cut inside. It can be very dangerous with the ball at her feet running at those back lines. She'll give the Deeks all they can handle tonight. Turning the page to Wake Forest, pretty much mere image formation-wise, even if we're going to call it something different. And they have had to shuffle at the back line due to injuries, and that means Zara Shavoshi more responsibility. Well, Shavoshi was fantastic in her freshman year, and she's only built upon that here in year two. She's going to have a, a big day, not only being the anchor of that back line, but dealing with Jamise Joseph as she cuts in and looks to have strikes from distance in front of that back line for the Demon Deacons. Tony Deleuze's team has given up one goal all season, as we told you, and yet they've had to replace both outside backs due to injury. Moment of unity prior to the ACC kickoff here. Conference play underway for Wake Forest in black and gold, NC State in red. Two teams that are used to playing postseason soccer, both advanced to the NCAA's second round last year. And they meet in a game with big ACC tournament implications right off the bat. And you can see right off the bat what, what Wake Forest is going to try to do here, and that's press and have turnovers like this one. Emily Morris, 13 in black and gold, in the penalty area there, couldn't get a shot through. So many different styles of play throughout the country, but both of these teams feel like their plays, their styles are extremely similar. Tim Santoro, the NC State head coach, was an assistant for Tony Deleuze at Wake Forest. And so everyone knows what to expect from this, Patty. A lot of passing. Well, that's right. And certainly both both brands of soccer for these two clubs are, are fantastic. They want to put the ball on the, on the floor and they want to connect passes. So imperative, though, that on the defensive side of the ball, that you can disrupt that rhythm either way. You've seen it early from Wake Forest. Try to have that high line, see if you can turn the ball over in their half. Liv Stowell has been very good this year. Back into a starting role. Sends it across. Kaya Hanks, the freshman, left it. And Fernanda Soto, everyone calls her Fern, came back to knock that away for NC State. Oh, NC State played Thursday night. They chose to make this a two-game week. Handled high point pretty comfortably. Doesn't mean Tim Santoro was 100% happy throughout the game. If you saw the show and you saw his halftime interview, you may be familiar. You, you can see with Jamise Joseph pressing on the other side of the field how much NC State was selling out to try and lock Wake Forest in on one side. the front runner Hannah Johnson they've been looking for a number nine who's goal dangerous for Wake Forest they make no bones about that Hannah Johnson starting her sixth contest has one goal to her credit Soto number 11 in red harassed and eventually fouled by Morris is Leah Hall Robinson out of the very experienced Jenna Butler at the back for NC State all right Patty two teams that come out 
lining up basically the same way, mostly want to play the same style and do the same things. What usually turns out to be the indicators of success when the styles and generally the talent level are that evenly matched? Well, I think for this one, it's going to be who who's going to bring the pressure and who's going to be able to have the other make some silly turnovers. Because, when, like you say, these are two very similar styles, possession-oriented styles. It's going to be the bad giveaways, kind of like this one, that can create those chances in transition. Not that either team that that's their primary objective, but. When, you, when you're so organized, it's hard to break down clubs like this. And so if you're able to press deep in their own half, create turnovers and go at them quickly, those can be some fantastic opportunities, especially when you have players like Jameis Joseph who, who can get in behind and show that athleticism. You saw the New Jersey native Tim Santoro, assistant for Tony Deleuze in the late 2000s. and has certainly turned around the NC State program to the point that you saw the last five times they have entered the NCAA tournament. Remember, they didn't play in the fall of 2020 when the rest of the ACC did. And so they really weren't in consideration for the ACC or for the NCAA tournament that spring. All the other five years, they've made the NCAA tournament and they've not just made it, they've made the second round three times in the Sweet 16. That's after 20 years of not making the NCAA tournament at all. It has been a big turnaround. Uh, it's certainly an incredible rebuild done by Tim Santoro and his staff. He feels like, though, now it's time to take that next step. Can they can they stop being a middle of the pack conference team, start to challenge and get into maybe that top four, especially we talked about it in the open, but now that the AC tournament is at six teams, that's got to be a year in and year out goal for this Wolfpack, Wolfpack club. Middle of the pack. I see what you did there. <laughs> Now, Wake Forest did make the tournament last year when it was six teams, and they kept North Carolina out. I mean, it was just unconscionable. I remember I talked to Anson Dorrance last August. We were joking about changing it from eight to six teams, and, and trust me, he wasn't worried at that point that they weren't going to make it. But that's the way the season went, and it was such a big deal for Wake Forest. Not only did they get there, they knocked off Duke. They took Florida State to overtime. Uh, they just would have liked to bring back some of that scoring, not a lot of offensive firepower back for the Deeks. Nina Zimmer, the left back, looking long. Shivoshi, 24, will win that for Wake. Three is Giovanna DeMarco, fifth year grad student. To the left back, Kristen Johnson. Uh, that's a really good spot for DeMarco. She, if she can sit just in front of that back four and be a pivot, then Stephen Deegans will have a lot more success in possession. On the flip side, you're, you're starting to see it for NC State when they have the ball, struggling to find Jaden Thomas and pivot. For that man, Tony Luz, he wants to go side to side quickly. He wants to connect passes through the midfield. And, and for them to be successful, DeMarco is going to have to be that, that barometer, that metronome in midfield. Jaden Thomas, number 12, keeps that moving. She's the connector through the midfield. Here is Joseph working against the freshman, Ali Schmidt. Voner trying to play Lexi Strickland through, and DeMarco is tracking back for Wake Forest. We told you both outside backs for Wake Forest in unfamiliar territory. Kristen Johnson, the left back, typically plays in the center, but Sophie Faircloth is out. And on the Wake Forest side, Tyla Ochoa recently ruled out, so Ali Schmidt making her first ACC start, and it's at right back. Just her fifth start of the season. Seventh game of the weekend, so six teams off to 1-0 starts, all wins or losses, no ties the first round of ACC play. 
As you see, Jamis Joseph. Leader of this team. She's the DJ, too, so she sets the tone in more ways than one. Got the call up to U.S. under 20 camp in May, which was a big deal. Got to play against Costa Rica. Did not end up factoring in the final squads for under 20 World Cup qualification or for the final tournament. Here is Joseph trying to get there. Ali Schmidt was into the tackle for Wake. And Lexi Strickland dispossessed by Emily Morris and commits the foul. Uh, it's a good step in there by Emily Morris. Just get a little tangled up and an easy call for our center referee, Alex Bellaterra. But it's important for, for both of those Wake Forest outside backs. We've seen that they're trying to condense the field and, and not allow NC State to pivot the game. That being said, when you get tight to those wide players, they, they are very capable in Jamise Joseph and for, for, excuse me, Leah Hall Robinson in spinning you. So if you're gonna create that, that sort of ability to condense the field, you gotta be very careful not to allow those players to turn and get into space. Freshman making her first start and right back for NC State as well in Brooklyn Holt. She had won that ball, but Wake Forest won it back. It'll be a Wolfpack throw. Just underway, no scoring chances to speak of yet. Expect the passing totals to be off the charts for these teams. Nina Zimmer, number two on it for NC State. This center back pairing has played, it seems like, 100 games together. It's not quite that. Lulu Gutenberger in her sixth year, Jenna Butler in her fifth. There you see the numbers. Each of them is within range of 100. It would take an extended postseason run, of course. This is Soto left back much of the year, but with Zimmer back from German national team duty, they're able to push Soto higher up the field. Looking for Hall Robinson, isolated against Kristen Johnson. Wants Joseph. Try to slick turn, but Blake able to deal with that. One right back by Gutenberger. When we wrap up today's Sunday Best, we turn to next week. And both of these teams will be in action as part of our Sunday Best. Wake Forest hosting Virginia Tech at 5 Eastern. In this specific stadium, NC State hosting number three Duke. They might be number two by then. Both matches right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock next Sunday night. Duke was not overwhelming. Needed a late goal to beat Syracuse. But number two North Carolina lost. We'll show you how they lost. It was staggering at halftime. Uh, a couple of other defeats in the top 10, so there's going to be some movement in the United Soccer Coaches rankings this week. As Brooklyn Holt throws in. In the penalty area, Strickland is offside. The flag went up. And it'll be a free kick for Wake Forest coming out. 
but it's been a better few minutes here for the Wolfpack. Starting to find the ball in and around the boxes. You see this combination play, trying to ask questions, get in those pockets of space. It's a really good spot from Strickland, just coming back from that offside position, a bit unlucky there. We see Wake Forest getting numbers in the box there defensively. Again, it's it's a staggering number. One goal allowed in eight games. That was against Rhode Island back in the first weekend of the season. What has Wake done so successfully, Patty, to keep that uh, consistent run of clean sheets? I don't think there's any secret sauce. I mean, they are just a very organized, technically very solid team. And we talk a little bit about that center back pairing. Certainly, they're an underrated pair in the ACC, but you see it already today. I mean, it's very hard to break down a team that can get numbers behind the ball like, like this Wake Forest, have those two blocks of four, and say, yeah, we're going to make you play in front of us and perhaps beat us from distance. Six straight shutouts, and the closest they came to giving up a goal in there was a penalty kick against Auburn that Caitlin Parks, because of course she's Caitlin Parks, came up with the save on. Kaya Hanks whistled for the foul. Joseph got turned for a second, but it came off her shin last. There you see Joseph. What's the key to handling a dangerous wide player? We see Jamise Joseph, great dribbler, loves to cut to the inside. Well, you can't let yourself get isolated because you're not going to be able to contain Jamise Joseph every time, and certainly she is going to beat you. And so not only are we going to have to talk about Ali Schmidt, the freshman, who's done well thus far through 15 minutes, but Zara Shavoshi has got to be in a place where she can support Schmidt because Joseph, as we've said it once, we'll say it a thousand times, she is so technically capable of cutting inside and making you pay in an instant. She had one of the most dramatic finishes of the season so far, scoring in the last 10 seconds to beat Campbell. Did it with one shoe on. One of the plays of the year for NC State so far. Paul Robinson closed down at the last second by Shivoshi. And it came off Paul Robinson last, out for a goal kick. NC State doing a better job pivoting the game, getting the ball wide. It's good from Brooke and Hull getting into the attack and finding the ball to Leah Hall Robinson. Unfortunate in the end to get that ball back off her, but certainly in this last five, ten minutes, you're seeing NC State start to settle into this game and, and play the way they want to, combining in and around that 18-yard box. Who had 17th minute for first shot? I think that's that's got to go down as one. But it never got too far off Hall Robinson's foot, that's for sure. Here is Stowell. Early delivery. Jenna Butler gets it away, sends it out for a corner. And now you've seen it on both sides, Jonathan, but both of these teams are so dangerous when they can get the ball wide, when they can expand the field, make the other team chase a bit, and then you can find some of those gaps, some of those spaces in and around the box, in between lines, and, and look to create chances. We told you, no Sophie Faircloth, no Tyla Ochoa. Also no Nikayla Small for Wake Forest. Three big pieces unavailable. And it'll be the freshman from Hawaii, Kaya Hanks, to take the game's first corner. No clean connection and a chance for Joseph. Quickly closed down. It was played into space and allowed Stowell to intercept.
exciting atmosphere in Raleigh as it would have been with, even without the cowbells, but they don't hurt. Maybe your eardrums hit now and then. Soto tripped up by Morris and a quick yellow card from Alex Billiter. First of the game. And this is a certain yellow card. Jonathan, a very clumsy challenge there from Emily Morris. Not a good angle and lucky that that's a, that's a bad challenge. She had already had one foul whistled on her too in the same part of the field. So I, I don't think there was any reason to wait and make it up the mind for the official. That is, by the way, her fourth yellow card in nine games. So she's one away from a suspension at some point during conference play when she gets another. Seems like it's a matter of when and not if. Give it away to Joseph. Voner tried to leave it for Strickland and Malika Mina, who's been just about anywhere she's needed to be for Wake Forest so far today, got to it first. Thomas with the long ball. Paul Robinson for NC State trying to combine. Seemed like a moment to exploit Patty for the Wolfpack. That big switch opening things up, and they wind up giving it away on the other side of the field. Oh, that's just pure class from Jaden Thomas. That 60 yard cross field switch and play that is going to open up this demon deacon team if you can pivot the game quick and then look for that combination in and around the box you saw it though there's a reason wake for has only given up one goal they are so quick and getting bodies behind the ball and not allowing you to find a chance on frame Joseph picks up the second ball for NC State. This is Gutenberger, part of their Bayern Munich connection from Germany. Ahead for Brooklyn Holt. Younger sister, they have Brianna Holt as well, you may see off the bench. Saw them both Thursday. Morris' switch picked off by Holt. That worked out well, because I think Nina Zimmer was trying to go back to the goalkeeper, but had it gone through, it would have been dangerous for Wake Forest. A decent little touch there from Jenna Butler. Yeah. It just counts as a pass completed, right? Liv Stowell gets loose, gets the shot off, and hits the bar. Wake Forest that close to taking an early lead. With their first shot of the game. And this is just a tremendous hit. It's a good turn there from Emily Morris. And the freshman pushes it to her right foot, knows exactly what she wants to do. But Maria Echezaretta, just the slightest of fingertips to push that one onto the bar. That is a fantastic save from the junior. Etches Aretta, the inches necessary to deny Stowell the opening goal. Here's Annika Volner. Brianna Weber, number three in for NC State while we were in replay, so that'll switch things up a little bit. Everybody. 
Weber also scored Wednesday, or beg pardon, Thursday against High Point. Should have had another. Passive offside call with the player screening the goalkeeper denied her. It's kind of the Swiss Army knife of the NC State roster, the sophomore from San Dimas, California. To play at the back, can play through the midfield in a couple of different roles. So she's in early for Strickland here. See the help provided around Jamise Joseph. She was in the middle. Laurel Ansbro, 34, checked to her, and as soon as the ball trickled through, Malika Mina, one of their eights, one of their center midfielders, was back there helping. Twenty-fifth minute here, no score. And I want to remind you, Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle crew will be in Tallahassee. Get you set for another full day of football. Also have halftime pre- and post-game coverage throughout the day. Complete wrap-up of the afternoon games at 6.30 as they get you set for the primetime game between Boston College and Florida State. 8 o'clock ACC Network and the ESPN app. All day Saturday, the Huddle get, got you covered. Santoro looking on, his team without an official shot. They did not give Hall Robinson one for that blocked effort. So the only shot was Stoll's effort tipped off the crossbar. I'm Jonathan Yardley alongside the former national champion at Virginia. I guess you're always a national champion, Patty. I shouldn't shortchange you. <laughs> Patty Foss. Wow. Opening weekend of conference play on the women's side as Jenna Butler pokes that one away. I mean, we're going to look at a lot of the highlights at halftime, Patty, but uh, what are your your thoughts on the opening weekend of conference play as a whole? Some surprises. Definitely some surprises, and I, and I think you're seeing a, a little bit more parity than maybe we expected. Teams like Syracuse pushing Duke to the to the 89th minute when, when Duke found a, a set-piece winner, and so Nikki thrasher Adams doing a good job up there. And then, you know, the expected also in that Virginia-Carolina game was hugely hyped and, and lived up to the hype. Just a tremendous amount of talent across the conference, and it's just so juicy just getting started. Yeah, okay, we'll show you the goals from that North Carolina-Virginia game at halftime, a wild one. And I think that change going from eight teams make the conference tournament to six teams make the conference tournament really puts pressure on these regular season contests because it is not easy to finish in the top six in the ACC. And the way the league is trending, that, that sort of mid-tier team, if you get outside of sort of Duke, Carolina, Virginia, and Florida State, these two teams, these games matter. And, and it just makes this sort of early season matchup all the more interesting. That being said, those top four are not safe either, as Carolina will tell you from last year. So it, it's just across the conference, game in, game out. It's just so interesting to watch. I'm still kind of flabbergasted that Wake made it last year. They had the benefit of missing on their schedule, Florida State, North Carolina, and Clemson. So that they don't play Florida State this year, but they, they do play some of the other big customers. Uh, but it was still pretty staggering to see North Carolina miss out and to see Wake Forest absolutely earn that spot and then go out and take advantage of it by beating Duke, making the semifinals. And both of these teams made the second round of the NCAA tournament before finally bowing out. No, and I think if you talk to Tony Deleuze, he, he might tell you. I would tell you that Wake Forest was the better team against Florida State in that semifinal last year. Yeah. So it, this is certainly a program on the rise and someone who is capable of knocking off anyone in the country on any given night. And it's still a young team, too, which I think... Wake Forest, especially in attack, is still trying to figure out its best options, its best combinations, and how to produce against high-powered opposition. Well, and I think that especially the back line 
last year saw so much time. Now we've seen some injuries that have changed the back line, but this is a, this is a core group, especially in that mid midfield with DeMarco sitting in front of that back four, who has seen a lot of top tier competition. Now losing Genementa and trying to figure out who who's going to be that goal scorer, still a big question mark. But if Demon Deep can figure that out, they can make a very deep run come November, December. on the ball, leaving it for Mina. Leah Hall Robinson coming back defensively. But nobody can keep it at the moment. DeMarco, she lines it up right to Etcha Zaretta, who does fumble it, but recovers the bouncing ball. It's, it's really good here from Emily Morris not to do too much just to drop this ball off for DeMarco and that ball as she hits it you can tell just moving a little bit as it goes into Maria Echezaretta not as easy as it might look. Boy, both Morris and Mina were in space there in front of the NC State back line. That pass was given away though. Zimmer found Joseph. Jamise Joseph leading bodies in her wake, freeing Hall Robinson. Shot was blocked. You could still see despite that run, Wake Forest get numbers back. That will have to be the first official shot for NC State, I would hope. There you go. Thirty-first minute, no score. Wake Forest, one of three unbeaten teams left in the ACC, along with Florida State and Virginia. Zimmer on the overlap. Diagonal ball looking for the run of Brianna Weber. Return pass didn't come off and is cleared away. That's a really good build up though from NC State. You actually saw Brooklyn Holt step in the midfield, being that breaking pass, able to turn and find the next side. That's the piece that's been missing really through the first half hour for the Wolfpack. It's getting the ball from side to side and, and not allowing to Wake Forest to sort of condense the field. Once they're able to expand, get it in wide areas, they, we've seen how dangerous they can be in combining in and around the box. You could see the space was there. And Zimmer and Voner both frustrated they weren't able to use it. Yeah. NC State starts with three straight home games in conference play. Virginia Tech on Thursday and the game we told you about next Sunday night against Duke. Wake Forest has its next three at home. Clemson, Virginia Tech, and Syracuse. the Wolfpack goalkeeper was with her feet. This goes side to side. Soto with the run out in front of Hall Robinson. Too much on the return pass. But Brooklyn Holt won it back. So 
still scoreless. Wake Forest, six straight shutouts and working on number seven. And it's not all about Caitlin Parks. It's, it's a great team defense, but the difference with Caitlin Parks in goal versus without, the save percentage and the goals against average really jump out at you, Patty. Well, I certainly do, and it goes beyond. She, she's a fantastic athlete, a great shot stopper. We can all see that, but she has that calming presence, that leadership in between the pipes that, that really just permeates through that back line and beyond for Wake. It was a shoulder injury, shoulder surgery before the 2019 season that kept her out of that campaign. And then her first season was the strange and bifurcated COVID season of 2020-21. But they had had trouble identifying a goalkeeper for a few years who would really command that number one goalkeeper role, and she has laid that problem to rest. Carly Wilson and Alex Wood in off the bench for Wake Forest. And a languid tying of the shoes here as we prepare for Wake Forest's second quarter. is a Wake Forest opener. It's Laurel Ansbro having a breakthrough season and she has the breakthrough on the scoreboard as well. Right, it's the second chance looking for the big 5'11 Laurel Ansbro. Just the backside, knows exactly what she's doing. Redirecting this one across the, that goal. Really catches Maria Etches a, a, a bit a, a, out of position and, and maybe by surprise just the leaping nature of that header. But fantastic header there from the grad student going up, winning the ball, and, and Laurel Ansbro breaking the deadlock. Only played two games last season in pretty much mop up duty and has earned her spot in the starting lineup. Tony Deleuze so happy with what she's given them this season, and I'm sure he never identified her as the goal scorer to open their account in ACC play. That completely changes the complexion of this one. to shield that one out. Kai Hanks had other ideas. And Gutenberger steps in at the right time. Yeah. Jamis Joseph on the run. That hit a hand. Should never be a penalty kick, and it won't be. NC State was up 2-0 on Thursday, and Tim Santoro was fuming heading into halftime. Felt his team had taken its foot off the gas too soon. I don't know that he's going to be fuming here, but the goal going in really changing the game state is not going to have him too happy either. Well, he's certainly not going to be happy, though. I will say, really, through the, the past 20 minutes, NC State probably been the better team, and that goal a bit uh, out of nowhere and against the run of play. That said, set pieces, especially those second balls, you, you have to be able to run with players. And, and for a looping header, Laurel Ansborough, a sophomore, just finds herself really free and, and able to get a good look on frame. So certainly Tim Santoro won't be happy, but I, I do I do agree. They, they, they looked good. They knocked the ball around, and, and you get the feeling that they will create chances here in the last few minutes of this half and going into the second half. Scoring has been a problem point for them. Scoreless ties at Nebraska, at South Carolina. Neither of those easy places to play by any means. 
ahead of that high point game. kick for Wake Forest. A reminder, ACC PM is ACC Network's new afternoon studio show. Mark Packer hosts alongside Trey Boston and Taylor Tannenbaum. They'll focus on football, but they get the latest from around the conference in every sport. ACC PM, weekdays, 4 o'clock Eastern, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. to the Kaya Hanks run. Uh, Hanks just showing a little bit of a second gear there. Unlucky, just finds that right foot a little bit of a slip inside the box, but that's such a good matchup to watch. Kaya Hanks going up against Brooklyn Holt. Look for that to continue more in the second half. Older sister, Jaden Hanks, a junior at Idaho, his honorable mention all big sky last year. Forrest not afraid to show a little gamesmanship with a 1-0 lead here late in the first half. Wait for NC State to apply some pressure. Somebody talking about somebody playing with two sixes. I'm not sure two sixes would be a bad idea for either team, really. I mean, we've talked about how important it is to pivot this game. And I would think that's more for NC State because they've struggled to find the ball at Jaden Thomas's feet and let her pivot the game. And so if you look to the second half and some potential changes for NC State, they got to find ways to get the ball wide, to change the, the point of attack, and to create more in and around that box. Yeah, I believe they're talking about Brianna Weber sitting alongside Jaden Thomas as the Wake Forest shot drifts wide. There's a look to this NC State team where they'll insert Weber and, and she'll play next to Thomas, put Strickland back in, and then push Fernanda Soto wide. I think that's something that, that Tim Santoro may try in the second half because Soto wide gives you a little bit more creativity if they can pivot the game, get her in wide spaces, and then let her combine with players like Lexi Strickland and, and, and Jimmy Joseph in around the box. I think that's something that they cer cer certainly have been lacking here in the first half. Wake Forest leads and a goal from the redshirt freshman Laurel Ansbro in the 35th minute. A looping header after a corner kick was played back in on the second phase. Boy, they had a 2v1 on the near side, but Stowell didn't know about it, just went for the end line, and it runs out for a goal kick. Here's Liv Stoll, starter two years ago during the COVID season and then a bench roll last year. Three goals already on the young campaign in that right wing spot. 
out of Londonderry, New Hampshire. New Hampshire not known as the deliverer of so many ACC soccer players. She did play for FC Stars in Massachusetts, well-known club up there. trying to apply the pressure. Parks got it away though. And this could create numbers up for Wake Forest. What about the exact situation we talked with Tony Deleuze about, Patty? I said, hey, how good has Caitlin Parks been? He didn't want to talk about the shot stopping. He said she's so good with her feet, hitting a ball 50 yards in the air, and we just saw it. Well, and, and just brings a different dynamic, building the game from the back. You, you can push those center backs wide, which we do see with Ansborough and Shimoshi, and you can allow your goalkeeper, really, to be that general of the back line in possession. Wake Forest leads. They're out shooting NC State, you know, officially four to one. They've created more looks. Are they the better team right now in the first half? And what can NC State do to counter that in the second. I'm not sure I'd be willing to say that they're the better team in the first half. I don't know if they were the worst either, though. As far as what can NC State do, they, they're going to have to find ways to break down what, what is a lower block now from Wake Forest. you got to get the ball wide, these sort of pos positions, and then start to break in between lines. Easier said than done, certainly, but we've already talked about it. You've you got to pivot the game, you got to move the ball fast, and you got to go side to side before you can go vertical. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Wake Forest leads on an Ansbro goal. Joseph tried to interchange with Weber. It was broken up quickly. Wood to Stowell on the near side. And that'll just about do it on the first half. Wake Forest goes on the road. Unbeaten, almost unscored upon this year. And they are keeping that same MO intact in the early stages of conference play, leading NC State 1-0 through 45 minutes in Raleigh. So Wake Forest with the halftime lead. They were joined by the NC State head coach, Tim Santoro. Tim, your thoughts on the first half? I liked a lot of things we did. Um, unfortunate that goal fell in the goal. Um, we have to be better in the final third. I think believing some, some of the decision making, some of the final balls, final run, we're just missing something in the final 25 yards. But overall, I, well, I liked what we did. Coach. Large portions of possession there, especially in the latter half of that half. Wake Forest dropping a little deeper. How do you go about explaining to your team how to break down Wake Forest and, and perhaps find some of those chances that, that you missed in the first half? Well, we're a little slow in transition. The first ball that we win has to go forward before they have time to get set. Uh, we're playing backwards and square, and um, it's allowing them to get set up. So, you know, we just have to be a little quicker facing forward, and uh, we have plenty of time here. So uh, we'll, we'll come out ready. Thanks, Tim, for your time. Good luck you. in the second half. Tim Santoro wants the ball moved quicker in the second half. Easier said than done against this stingy Wake Forest defense. Hey, the defender's getting in on the act at the other end. One center back sets it up. The other, Ansbro, loops it home. Wake Forest leads NC State through 45 minutes. Stay tuned for our halftime report. Trying to phone out for some goals for NC State. Trying to come from behind in this second half with Wake Forest leading 1-0 as we get ready to start the second half in the opening weekend of ACC play. Go back to the first half and take a look at the highlights. NC State had a lot of the ball as we predicted and as we expected. Wake Forest had the best scoring chances, Patty. 
Well, the best scoring chances certainly went to the Demon Deacons, and they really came through playing through that midfield, able to find the feet of Emily Morris, both in the first clip and actually the second one, setting up those central midfielders for some good attempts from distance. But until that goal, it was just distance. This one was a little different, and Zara Shavoshi serves that ball in. It's a looping header from Laurel Ansboro that really looks like he catches Maria Echezaretta off guard and off her line a, a bit, putting the Demon Deacons up 1-0. Even Ansbro was surprised. That one wound up in the corner. 35th minute goal has Wake Forest in front. It, it looks comfortable on here. We watched the game, and you heard Tim Santoro say he felt good about NC State's effort as well. And we'll see what kind of adjustments they can make in the second half to get back in this one. Wake Forest, though, halfway to another shutout. They came in with six in a row, number two in the country in defense with just one goal allowed all season. The locker room discussion about adjustments continuing onto the field, and it looks like Brianna Weber will start this second half, so maybe taking a page out of the Patty Foss playbook. decisions about when to go and when not to go and uh, hopefully we'll have some discipline there. Tony, thanks for your time. Good luck closing right. it out in the second. Thank you. Both coaches gracious with their time on either side of halftime. We had heard that shout from the sideline, Patty, about watching the midfield shape and reacting to it and that certainly is on Tony Deleuze's mind as Wake Forest carries a 1-0 lead into this second half. Well, and I think this is NC State team that will change their shape several times throughout the ha half, especially if they if they maintain possession without creating chances. And so, you know, we talked a lot about the capabilities and the different looks that NC State will throw at you. You're already seeing that coming out. Jamise Joseph lining up on the right side now. Fernanda Soto out wide on that left. See if they can become a little bit more creative in those new spots in the second 45. Touch there. We'll turn it over to Wake Forest. But quickly won back by Brianna Weber, number three in red for NC State. Strickland, 23 in red, back in to start this second half. Fernanda Soto out, and as Patty mentioned, a personnel 
adjustment as Leah Hall Robinson goes up top. And Anika Voner, number 10, on the ball right now, who had been playing centrally, is wide on the left. Joseph switching to the near side. For Wake Forest, Alex Wood stayed in up top, 16 in black and gold. And Carly Wilson stayed in in the midfield. So, so often you see teams revert to the starting lineup at halftime. Neither squad goes that route as we open the second half here. Morris plays that through for the speed of Hanks. Dangerous ball through. Echezaretta seemed frozen on her line. And a scrambling recovery from the left back. Zimmer got it away. Brooklyn Holt, good adjustment, got that ball away to win a throw in. Well, we've seen it time and again now down that left hand flank. Just the speed of Kaya Hanks. This is a really dangerous ball put across that box. And, and Liv Stoll does really well getting in that six yard box, only to have a, a fantastic play in the end by Gutenberger to clear that line. But it's a really good sign for Tony to lose both Kaya Hanks and Liv Stoll, the two freshmen, getting involved early in that attack. Yeah, we see NC State switching up its attacking players, trying to find different matchups and combinations. Wake Forest seems happy with players where they are at the moment. Wilson. Long switch, Liv stole the target. With Alex Wood. First touch didn't bring the ball with her. And knocked away. Here's Joseph and Hall Robinson, two against three. The double Joseph, she gets the cross away. And it comes back out for a throw in, but that was dangerous. Well, certainly dangerous anytime you get Jamise Joseph line up at you one on one. You, you don't want that if you're Tony Deleuze, but Zara Shaboshi does a really good job coming across, helping Laurel Ansborough, not, not allowing Jamise Joseph to line her up and take her on individually. Doesn't need to win the ball, but does enough just to slow her down and not allow a chance on frame. Robinson back to goal. Now Joseph, three black shirts around her. And NC State will enjoy a little bit more of the ball here. They go straight up the middle looking for Strickland and she can't bring it in under pressure from Mina. NC State going to play possession, try to keep you locked in your own half, sometimes to a fault. How difficult is it, Patty, to play against a team capable of maintaining possession for long stretches as the Wolfpack are right now? Well, I think more, more than even the physical toll it has, I mean, it has a mental toll, trying to keep locked in and watching the ball pass, pass, pass. But if you're Tim Santoro, he said it at halftime, his team is capable of knocking the ball around. The problem is that they've knocked it around horizontally and they got to start breaking lines. That first pass has to go forward and they got to find pockets of space where they can create. Tim Santoro saying whoever doesn't have the ball is going to have to defend, and that's not the first choice for either team. They both like to have the ball. But it doesn't mean that whoever has the ball more is going to win. Uh, both teams pretty darn good at defending. <laughs> we'll say that. Hanks trying to combine. 
Yes, eventually was behind Kristen Johnson out for a throw. different role for Hall Robinson. A lot of back to goal work playing as the striker rather than as the winger as she did in the first half. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Boner. it's shown something a little different from this NC State team. Something we didn't see in the first half from Annika Voner up there was that back to goal ability to get numbers building around you. This falls to Annika Voner. Looking for Strickland and a well-timed step by Shivoshi, but it's one back. <laughs> Gutenberger long out of the back, looking for the run of Brooklyn Holt. Can she get there? Dangerous ball right through the six. Nobody in red making the attacking run. Uh, just a little bit of a different look from NC State there with, with Jamise Joseph flipping to that right side here in the second half. She's someone we've talked about, likes to go inside of it. That's allowing space for Brooklyn Holt to do just what she just did. Bomb up that right-hand side, a good ball across and a dangerous chance there for the Wolfpack. Now, this is wrapping up our Sunday best today. And next week's Sunday best includes not one, but two women's soccer contests, one featuring each of these teams. Awake against Virginia Tech at 5, NC State hosting Duke at 7. Both matches here on ACC Network and the ESPN app next Sunday. 55th minute here, Wake Forest leading on a looped header from Laurel Ansbro in the 35th minute, NC State has had all of the ball to start this second half, though. Jonathan Yardley, Patty Foss with you. Final game of seven to open conference play for women's soccer this weekend. This is Joseph. One timer didn't come off as Strickland with a miss hit. But NC State growing in confidence, Patty, and rightly so. Uh, and finding Jamise Joseph with the ball, letting her go to work on that right-hand side. It's already paying dividends here in the second half. Uh, I think that's a chance that Lexi Strickland will look back and, and know she had a bit more time, perhaps could have taken a touch uh, and gotten a better chance on frame. Holt, the freshman right back, playing a 1-2 there, looking for Hall Robinson. It's picked off by Shivoshi. Kaya Hanks will try her luck from distance. And it's no problem for Etcha Zaretta, who wants to go quickly. Reset the teams for you quickly. NC State, Maria Echezaretta in goal. Brooklyn Holt, the right back. Lulu Gutenberger, Jenna Butler, the center backs. Nina Zimmer on the left. In the midfield, Jaden Thomas, the deepest lying player. Brianna Weber is in there as well. Lexi Strickland, the highest up the field. And in this second half, Jamise Joseph is on the right. Annika Voner is on the left. And Leah Hall Robinson is the central forward. And the head coach, Tim Santoro's 4-3-3. Just one loss on the year for NC State. That was to Harvard, but goal scoring has not come easy. For Wake Forest, also a 4-3-3. Caitlin Parks in goal. Allie Schmidt, the right back. Laurel Ansbro 
and Zara Chavoshi, the center backs, Kristen Johnson on the left. In this second half, Carly Wilson, Emily Morris, and Malika Mita are the central midfield trio. How about that dummy from Jamise Joseph? It is covered, though, by Ansbro. The attacking trio, Liv Stoll on the right, Kaya Hanks on the left, and Alex Wood starting the second half up top for Wake Forest. Are you seeing the adjustments Tim Santoro talked to us about, moving the ball more directly in transition? Uh, a little bit, sure. I, I think they could, they could be even more direct at times, but, but they are certainly asking questions like this with vertical passes, long plays around. Paul Robinson just ran out of room, but it stays with NC State. In the end, well dealt with by Wake Forest at the back. Lulu Gutenberger fights to win it back for the Wolfpack. Still Gutenberger. She used to play farther forward. Shavoshi there again. I think one of the toughest parts here for NC State is that even if you want to go direct, you want to go vertical, Wake Forest is sitting so deep that, that it's really tough to find space in behind. Wake is making you play in front of them, making you break them, break them down through combination play, and those gaps Hard to come by right now for the Wolfpack. It's been hard to come by for everybody this season, to be fair. One goal allowed in eight and a half plus games now for Wake Forest. The only team better defensively is Indiana. And Patty, you and I got a kick out of looking at the Indiana schedule today. In eight games, they are 2-0-6. They have 6-0-0 zero, zero ties this year. Back to the end of the second. <laughs> Their only wins are over Indiana State and over a Division Three school from Indiana, Trine. But I mean, we're talking good teams that tied 0-0 as well. They tied Penn State today, 0-0. And a couple of ACC foes. Wake Forest, a little more offensive punch than that. And as we've talked about, the defense to match. Kristen Johnson in the penalty area, cut it back, and Brianna Weber covering up for NC State. And Brooklyn Holt had that dangerous cross a few minutes ago. One of two Holt sisters on this team, and it's, it's an NC State family. Their mom, Carla, played for NC State 95 to 97. Their dad, Tori, seven-time Pro Bowl selection, Super Bowl 34 champion. He's on the right there, watching intently. And we haven't seen Brianna in this one yet, but Brooklyn getting her first ACC start. The family that uh, NC State will pack through and through. Giovanna DeMarco checking back into the game, giving Emily Morris a breather here for Wake Forest. Substitution patterns really will shift in conference play. Teams will not go as deep for the most part. North Carolina, the obvious exception, with so much on the line in these. For all this pressure, just one shot for NC State in the second half, and just two officially for the game. Alex. 
Stefan, for Wake Forest, this is exactly how they, they want this second half to play out. They want to be able to slow the game down and really kill you death by a, a thousand passes. I mean, this is a Wake team that is so comfortable doing this. They'll knock the ball around all day. So it, as we time ticks down and NC State starts looking for a goal, they're going to have to push that line of confrontation a bit higher, see if you can start to press Wake Forest and, and create some turnovers because as of now, unable to create chances through possession. Got to see if you can make Wake make a mistake and beat themselves. Basically, this defensive run to start the season is not even Wake Forest's best ever. That was last year when they straight up started with eight straight shutouts. One goal in eight games this year, still pretty good. And an ACC play opening shutout would really fit the bill for Tony Deleuze and company. Somehow, NC State hasn't beaten Wake since 2016, even though in that time, NC State has been the program more consistently making the ACC tournament, making the NCAA tournament. But Wake Forest leads the all-time series and is 3-0-1 in the last four. Shiboshi may be a little bit fortunate to get the foul there because that is a good little poke from Leah Hall Robinson and you got the feeling that NC State was just ready to pounce and, and, and counter on, the, on that turnover bailed out a bit by the referee. Watch the speed of Hanks. Brooklyn Holt having to deal with that and sends it out for a Wake Forest corner kick. Kaya Hanks from Kailua Kona, Hawaii. Kanawaena High School. As you may have guessed from watching her run, she dabbled in a little track at now and then. She delivers corner kick number three. It's a dangerous one. I don't know if that's where the touch was intended to go, but it put it in a tough spot. Uh, this is a really good flat ball in the end from Kaya Hanks. You're right, not sure that's her intention, but that is a good, dangerous ball across, sneaking through, and then bounces out here. Zara Shavoshi has a go from 45 yards, maybe uh, a, a little bit for, far for, for the center back. Optimistic. She's thinking about best case scenarios, yes. If anybody could replicate that touch, you might want to add that that near post corner kick to your arsenal, but I don't know how many times out of 10 you can pull that off. Fernanda Soto checking back in. spelled here. So Soto to left back, Nina Zimmer to right back is the change for NC State. It's an interesting move by Tim Santora, and you got to think that's that's an attacking-minded move, letting Fernanda Soto go from left back, push forward, see if she can start to overlap on that left-hand side, get around Voner, and create some of those 2v1 combination play in the attacking third. Started much of last year and much of this year as a left back, so plenty comfortable there. I mean, we've seen her at left back, we've seen her at right wing, we've seen her at the 10. It's just, just a player that is so dynamic and versatile that it is such, such a nice piece of this Wolfpack team and, and an addition, a tool for Tim Santoro. She played left back most of the year last year, and I showed up for their NCAA tournament game, and she was at, I think, right wing, and I'm like, what is going on here? But it's the name of the game. She can, she can spot up wherever it helps the group. On the ball here. Jenna Butler, she played some midfield earlier this season, but 
returned to the back line by now. Started this play. Hansborough coming over to deny Jamise Joseph. And that's what Tim Santoro is talking about at halftime. They got to go for it. That's such a good ball to find Annika, Annika Voner on that left hand side. But her first touch is backwards and it stalls the attack. It doesn't allow, allow NC State to go that way in, in a quick and, and efficient manner. That one came off Fernanda Soto's hand. Gives us a chance to remind you about the huddle coming your way Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern from Tallahassee. They'll have halftime shows, pre- and post-game shows throughout the day as well. 6.30, they'll wrap up the afternoon games and preview the primetime matchup. Florida State and Boston College, 8 o'clock on ACC Network. And, of course, the ESPN app. That's all Saturday college football. ACC Women's Soccer will be Thursday, Sunday next week. Pitt, Miami, and Wake Clemson on Thursday. And we've already told you about the Sunday doubleheader. Wake, Virginia Tech, and NC State against Duke. Wake Forest applying pressure and winning the ball back as the Wolf Pack chant tries to inspire NC State. Lexi Strickland over Zealous. Free kick coming for the Demon Deacons. She's from Raleigh, began her career at North Carolina, played in the national championship game. This cross comes in low and touched wide at the near post by the run of Wilson. Did take a deflection, so corner kick the decision. As Emily Morris checks back in. Hey, who's going with G? Fifth corner kick for Wake Forest. All right, 20 minutes to go, Patty. What options are on the table? Or does NC State just do what they're doing just a little more urgently? I think you got to start throwing some numbers forward if you're Tim Santoro. They, they really haven't created chances at all in this game. They've had a lot of the ball, but they're not having the ball in dangerous spots. And so you got to start to press uh, press a little bit further up the field. Times like this, can you get red shirts forward, put Wake under a lot of pressure, and see if you can create turnovers and perhaps find a chance in transition? speed and it does eventually get called for being a little late into that challenge she's disbelieving Field, everybody going for the ball and NC State with it. Joseph back on the left side where she began the game, but it's out for a throw.
Patty, local players like Joseph and Paul Robinson from the East Coast and Strickland and many others from North Carolina, a big part of the plan at NC State, but they've also got international representation. And Tip Santoro telling us that all started with a Wake Forest player, Katie Stengel, who Tim knew when he was coaching at Wake. Then his her sister, Jackie Stengel, played at NC State. Katie was playing over at Bayern Munich, and she wanted her little sister to have some help. And now it's kind of turned into a pipeline. Oh, it's so interesting to talk to Tim Santoro about the way that he thinks about recruiting. It, it's, it's such a competitive recruiting landscape in North Carolina, re recruiting against Carolina and Duke, that he, he said he really has to be successful both in his backyard, but then across the pond. And, and those have been his two priorities. We, you know, you talk about the Bayern Munich connection and six players now from Bayern Munich and this NC State team, and, and it, just finding a way to, to build his pipelines Get, get the kind of talent that it takes to compete at the ACC, and that's really been the difference in this AC, in this NC State program over the last few years. The level of talent that Tim Santoro has been able to bring across the pond and from his backyard, as, as you mentioned, so many players from North Carolina. Yeah, they've they've branched out into other countries as well. As you see, Nina Zimmer played in the Under 20 World Cup. She was also captain of the under 19 squad a year younger in the european championship in the spring but they've also got etcha zaretta from spain and emika kawagishi from japan who is normally a starter but is out due to injury and so it, it all started a little bit with katie stengel who by the way scored two penalty kicks for liverpool today back in the women's super league upsetting the defending champions from chelsea on the opening day has had some internationals. They do have Kristen Johnson from Iceland, had Hulda Arner's daughter last year. Lost a little bit of that momentum due to COVID. <laughs> NC State trying to find a shooting angle. Strickland finally lets fly and whistles it wide. It did take a deflection. We're waiting for confirmation, and it will be a corner. Now, this is good from NC State, just pinning Wake Forest back, not allowing them to get out of their, their own half. It, it's a good first time hit there from Lexi Strickland, and one certainly going on frame, if not to be blocked. First corner of the game for Lulu Gutenberger. was able to hack it clear after a few moments of nerves. Wake Forest leads on a Laurel Ansbro header back in the 35th minute. Came on a ball reserved after a corner kick. NC State been held to four official shots in this one. None of them forcing a save from Caitlin Parks. take the ball away from Zimmer. It 
see NC State not going to press as high as Wake Forest has at times in this game. And they still get the ball back. Misplay, miscommunication really between Ansbro and Johnson there. 77th minute. Time growing short for NC State. Hosting this conference opener with Patty Foss. I'm Jonathan Yardley. Wake Forest unbeaten on the year. Only given up one goal on the year and leads this for the moment. Paul Robinson. NC State getting some numbers forward. Driven low. And not in. Lexi Strickland gets the goal. And NC State has tied it up. Oh, they, they needed that in the worst way. Well, and it's just such a good buildup from NC State. Showed a little bit of that urgency that Tim Santoro noted at, at halftime. Getting the ball forward, moving it side to side, and allowing your player in Leah Hall Robinson to go to work. She does such a fantastic job getting to the end line, cutting that ball back. And who else? Lexi Strickland on the doorstep makes no mistake, knocks this game at one. We said maybe they needed to be a little more direct, a little more urgent. And of course, it's a player who started her career in North Carolina who finishes off a move that was a little more direct, a little more urgent. Strickland has taken four of North Carolina State's five shots. And after Voner couldn't control the initial cross, Strickland was in the perfect spot to handle that one. Now she's you looking for more. Well, you won't see it on the, on the score sheet, but that, that build up starts with a sense of urgency from Fernanda Soto at midfield. She comes into possession. She knows exactly what she wants to do. She takes that first touch forward, and she starts that build from the other side of the field, but it's fast. It's quick from Tim Santoro. That's when his team's at his best, and finally they can create a dangerous shot, and, and they're rewarded with the first goal. I love to do this to you, Patty. Honestly, right now, you can see it in the box score because they've given Soto an assist. It's not going <laughs> to hold up. It will never hold up, but if it's reviewed. But uh, for the That's moment, it's got to be a third assist. Maybe get three assists on the goal. I mean, Strickland was in there, too, so uh, it won't it won't matter. The credit in the buildup will be spread around the team as it should be. And now the question becomes, can either team find a winner? Remember, no overtime this season in women's or men's college soccer. So you get one point for a tie, three points for a win. Teams around the conference would be thrilled with one point apiece. You root for a tie in any game involving teams early in the season that are not yours. But each of these teams hopes of finishing in the top six greatly reduced, to be honest, with a tie instead of a win tonight. First goal in more than 600 minutes allowed by Wake Forest since August 21st against Rhode Island. Lexi Strickland in the 78th minute. Her third. Has us tied up and has us set for a wide open finish because now both teams want to win it. Annika Voner. Weber and Soto really let Wake Forest back into that. Now it falls kindly for Soto. Fernanda Soto, Annika Voner didn't get anything direct on the shot once it left her foot. And a couple of players down in different spots on the field, so we do get a whistle. Malika crunchy Nina. tackle there, yeah, from Lexi Strickland. A good, clean, but hard challenge there on Mina, and certainly she's going to feel the effects of that one. Boy, Mina has covered so much ground today. Sophomore who came through the Arsenal Academy in England. All right, we're ready. 
ready. We're ready. We're ready. Let's go. And yeah, she's going to trot back on the field as soon as the referee allows her once the ball is back in play. Hey, just keep the ball moving. Don't have to be that dribble. Keep the ball moving. 80th minute, and again, in past years at this point in the game, everybody would be kind of cagey knowing they had overtime to see if they could get the better of the game. You really felt like you still might have 30 minutes left. And now you've got 10 frantic minutes to try and get an extra two points in the standings. But the risk, of course, is there that you come away with none. Drifted at the near post, and Echezaretta was able to get over and cover it. State Joseph ahead for Vona. NC State has dominated this second half, taking the last four shots of the game, including Lexi Strickland's tying goal. Paul Robinson's diagonal ball cut out by Ali Schmidt. Been very solid at right back today for Wake. Olivia Duvall in the game for Wake Forest up top now. Get up, get up. Hanks to her right foot, and you saw the idea, but she wasn't able to find the corner. back in. Yeah. Right over. Watch the dummy, watch the dummy. Come on, you gotta be more physical there. Oh, Soto with the fancy footwork still going. Foul whistled. Is it a yellow card? Nope. Tim Santoro asking the question that I was thinking. Well, I, and I think he has a point. I mean, I mean, Fernanda Soto has gotten hacked down time and again, and that's a clear, that's a clear and obvious professional foul as she's looking to combine down that left-hand side. So certainly he, he has a case and, and not happy. Wasn't quite as egregious on replay, but again, given that the ball was past her and she was playing the body, you understood the frustration. And Tim Santoro did get a yellow card for his trouble. This is Jamise Joseph in on goal. Joseph puts it away! This is such a good entry ball from Jenna Butler. Just 40 yards, finding Jamise Joseph. That's a fantastic turn. And then Caitlin Parks gets caught a little bit in no man's land, and Joseph makes her pay. This is just a fantastic ball. Even better turn, and then she's not going to make any mistake from there. Slots at home, gives the home team the lead, and potentially three points here on the opening day of the ACC slate. 
Jamise Joseph, the hero so often for NC State, has them in front in this one. Just as Tony Deleuze said to us this week, you can shut down Jamise Joseph, bottle her up the entire game, and one play, she can make you pay. And that is exactly what she did with that turn and finish. You gotta give so much credit to NC State. Wake Forest has given up one goal all season. Had a one nothing lead. NC State had only had one official shot in the first half. And this second half has been fantastic. Well, it's sort of amazing, you know, it's, it's a game in which the Wolfpack have had so much of the ball. They're so committed to the possession. And, and then that, that potentially game-winning goal comes from a, a one pass. Jenna Butler finds that ball, and, and a world-class ball indeed, 60 yards straight down the middle of the field, breaks three lines in the process, and, and then you're finding Joseph, who, who is your goal scorer and, and your go-to scorer, and she does just that. So it, it, for how well they've played and, and how they've been committed to their brand, we heard Tim Santoro talk about how they have to go forward. Well, there's that vertical pass from Jenna Butler finding Joseph for the second goal. Don't tell me you're going to try and convince Tim Santoro to prioritize direct ball straight up the gut. <laughs> that would be a losing effort, but yeah. certainly, certainly maybe something that they should add to the repertoire a little bit earlier. But I mean, there are so few players around the country who can play that entry pass that Jenna Butler played. It's just fantastic. And you saw just played out nine players in one pass. Wake Forest now chasing it, trying to salvage a point for a game they've controlled much of the time in terms of the scoreboard at least, not in terms of possession as we've discussed. And now it opens up for State. Possession didn't change, so we're just gonna play through that touch. to the corner. Now, a quick reminder, tomorrow afternoon you can catch ACCPM, the new afternoon studio show with Mark Packer, Trey Boston, and Taylor Tannebaum. Focus on football, but also go around the conference every weekday, 4 o'clock Eastern, right here at ACC Network and the ESPN app. I think we can get them to talk about the Virginia-North Carolina game. Are they better? After, after that goal fest that it was, I would, I would expect that we'll see a little cameo. I mean, literally unprecedented for North Carolina to lead 2 nothing and lose in regulation. As Hall Robinson, I believe, is the one credited with the yellow card for time wasting there. Smart, 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 red. change for Wake Forest to find one. Stowell, Schmidt. Miss hit that. She sends long. Gutenberger there. And it's Strickland whistled for the foul. Clock runs. Now it's stopped. A 
Not sure why it stopped, if there's no card and no injury that's going to require treatment. Just a little bit of an awkward challenge there. More like Amina going in with Lexi Strickland. Uh, maybe a little injury for you, Jonathan. Three kick chance here for Wake Forest. Their goal came from the second phase of a dead ball restart back in the first half. Much different situation staring him in the face here. Alex Billiter discussing with the players who are lining up at the top of the 18. Here we go. The little step over turn wins a corner. Striking a blow for all center backs who want to contribute at this end of the field. Sixth Wake Forest corner. Oh, that dangerous one at the near post, and we're going to get quick attention to both players involved in that collision. That is the only thing to worry about right now. It looks like Wake Forest player is back up and okay, but concern on the NC State sideline. You see the walking wounded already on crutches behind them. And so Taylor Chisholm, who has not seen a minute of action in this game, may have to come in for the final 58 seconds. But you understand and you share the concern on the, really on both benches for anybody dealing with a head injury. as Lulu Gutenberger able to sit up. She's not the longest tenured player in the ACC. That's still Clara Robbins, of course. But she's right on up there. You see the collision with Giovanna DeMarco here. And maybe with Paul Robinson as well. That's such a dangerous ball coming across that near post. And a dangerous play really with those two players coming together. Really good to see Lulu Gutenberger walking off under her own volition. So Taylor Chisholm comes in, the freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina. She's played regularly this year, but her ACC debut is trying to see out the last 58 seconds of this one. Saw the yellow card to DeMarco and then Fernanda Soto taking exception. Not the way anybody wanted to see this game end.
Lexi Strickland just came out. And Wake Forest, yeah, wisely checking on DeMarco now since she was involved in each of those last two. Yeah, I mean, you have to admit that it's, it's progress to see both teams and everybody taking the head injury so seriously. You hate to see them happen, but to see everybody hopefully being evaluated to the best of, of medical ability is such a step forward. Well, it certainly is. It's a good thing for the game, and you just hope Brianna Weber, it, as well as Lulu Gutenberger, is okay, and, and we see them in, in the next games to come. But that one is a really tough challenge here between Weber and, and G. DeMarco. That's just late from DeMarco and certainly very dangerous. I think it was officially three seconds between head-to-head -head collisions. Joseph in the corner. She's not happy with Kaya Hanks, who picks up a yellow. And this one is going to end Shippy. But it's too bad, Jonathan, because this is a game that has been a re really uh, the beautiful game all, all day long. Both teams trying to play, and now we've seen a couple of tough challenges. Certainly, uh, that's, that's unnecessary from the freshman, and then the retaliation also unnecessary from Jamise Joseph. It, really, if you're NC State, though, especially a senior in Joseph, you, you just got to get out of here now. I mean, 40 seconds left, the ability to perhaps take three points at home to open the conference slate. It, it's time just to let the emotions settle and, and get out of here and move on to the next one. Let's say we haven't gotten a chance to talk about it because we've been scared for people's health. But I mean, this is potentially a critical, absolutely vital win for NC State in terms of trying to finish in the top six and get three points against a direct competitor. Oh, it's massive, especially the way that they've done it. Uh, coming from behind, finding two goals against a team that had only given one up all year. And, and it'll really be something that this NC State team and Tim Santoro can build upon as they head to the next nine conference matchups. This should be fun. Everybody around Leah Hall Robinson in the corner. Strickland in the 78th, Jamise Joseph in the 84th, and it is a priceless win to open conference play. Uh, it's just a fantastic game both ways. Both teams putting on a show in terms of possession. In the end, NC State finding a way to create chances in the second half, and, and their stars show up. Jamise Joseph, a fantastic turn and finish to put this game away and take three points at home. What a finish to our Sunday best here on ACC Network.
And what a finish to this game. Wake Forest got the early lead, but NC State comes away with a 2-1 win for our entire crew, for my partner, Patty Foss. I'm Jonathan Yardley. Thanks for joining us, watching this one from Raleigh tonight. Lexi Strickland, Jamise Joseph, and NC State are 1-0 in conference play. The Wolfpack 2, the Demon Deacons 1, the final tonight.